And you also had some hands-on experience inadvertently as a journalist learning about fights. Oh, well, I got beaten up when I was a journalist, yeah, um, by a 23 stone wrestler. So he had a couple of pounds on me, you know. Um, yeah, I, I was I, I just knocked on the wrong door at the wrong time. I, I went to, to see this guy about a story we'd been given, and uh, he wasn't very happy about it, so he started uh, battering me. So uh, I, 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 I tried to run away, but he came after me and carried on, uh, carried on punching me. And, and um, being a wrestler, he knew how to, to hurt me without necessarily leaving many marks. My photographer, meanwhile, was at the other end of the street, running very hard for the car. Um, <laughs> said afterwards, oh, I, was, I wanted to get the car to make sure I could come get you in the car, you know. <laughs> so, um, I did, it did actually give me a, 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 a valuable insight into what it actually does feel like to get, get a, a real battering. Um, you know, I did not wake up the next morning throwing the, the covers back, saying, I'm going out there to put the world to rights. I, mean, I just didn't want to get out of bed ever again. Um, <laughs> And so it, 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 I suppose it gave me a, a, quite a, a strong sense of when, particularly when I was writing the Kate Brannigan novels, that when she gets into a violent encounter, then she gets hurt, and she feels, you know, she feels hurt. It, it, it's not some. She doesn't leap to her feet, and, 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 and everything's all right, and, and nothing really lasts more than two pages. I, I, I felt quite strongly that there was, was a thread in, in, in crime writing, some women's crime writing in particular, that. Uh, that, that just kind of diminished the whole impact of that sort of violent attack that comes out of, out of nowhere, aren't right? you? Yeah. Uh, and actually does have quite a profound effect. I mean, I, I, for some considerable time after that, every time I rang a doorbell or knocked on a door, I could feel a trickle of cold sweat down the back of my neck. You know, is this going to happen to me again? So it, it, it taught me not to be, um, not to be sort of throwaway about violence, really. Now, in addition to your contributions writing-wise to the genre, you've also done a lot to support young writers. Um, well, you have to get close enough to them to poison them, you know. <laughs> I'm trying to get rid of them from a distance. <laughs> Who do you feel is really making some great changes in the genre now? Well, I think one of the, the interesting areas that's, that's emerging, certainly on the other side of the Atlantic, is, is crime writing in Ireland. I think we're starting to see some really talented young Irish writers coming through. You've got writers like Stuart Neville in the north, you've got writers like Alan Glynn in the south, Declan Hughes, Tana French, and Jean Kerrigan. There seems to be a lot of really exciting um, work coming out of there. A country that has no tradition to speak of in, in, in crime fiction. Uh, there's also, I'm also very excited by the fact that we're getting a lot more novels in translation now. Um, it took a long, long time for, for, certainly for English publishers to cotton on to the fact that it was much more sensible to publish a good Norwegian novel than another mediocre English novel. Um, and so we've been getting a lot more uh, books translated from, from the French, from the Italian, with, with writers like um, Giancarlo Carofilio and Andrea Camilleri. And the Scandinavian writers, I mean, obviously everybody knows about Stieg Larsson. Um, and uh, because I am the girl Stieg Larsson read. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but there's also writers, you know, like, like John Esbo and Anna Holt. Um, and you've got, uh, you know, Icelandic writers like Arnold Durin Dvidason. And I think it's, it's fascinating to, to see these books coming out of different cultures that give us a real, um, a real insight into how, how people in other countries live, how they think, you know. Um, the responses they have to to the same kind of world events that we're all going through. And I was, I was reading <coughs> just just a few weeks ago. I was reading the, an Anne Holt one that is set I think in 2010, and she's writing. One of the things that she's writing about is you know the the, 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 the world crisis of capital, which of course has a very, very different effect in Norway, where they're not having the same kind of crisis at all because they've got a very different economy. It's not based on the euro, they're not part of the EU, they have the oil revenues, they've got a very uh, a very supportive social welfare system. Um, and so the, her take in the course of this book on, on the crisis of capitalism is very, very different from every other one I've been reading. And so I think uh, for me, that's one of the, the really exciting things that's, that's been happening in recent years, has been this, this explosion of translated crime fiction that gives us a sidelight onto other people's worlds. I'm going to wrap up with one more question and then I'm going to open it up and see what 
what questions you all have. Uh, value accomplished a lot already. And there's still many years to come. So what's still on that bucket list for you? For another 30 books, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've been asked if I've got any uh, interest in a lot of crime writers in, in writing young adults. I, I, I just, I don't, I don't see it happening for me. I mean, I'm not, it's, not a, it's not a market that, that, um, that instantly comes to my head. It's not the kind of stories that, that I, I think of. I've got a kids book coming out in January called My Granny is a Pirate, but it's a picture book for like, you know, two-year-olds and up. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how they're going to market it, you know, it's like, um, She's scared the shit out of you now, and I'm scared the shit out of you. <laughs> Maybe not. Um, but I mean, you know, it's, it's, I've, I've, you know, you never say never because you don't know what's going to come, come along. I think, um, I mean, you know, I, I, I see the kind of books that my, my son is reading, um, and he's 10, but he's reading books that they say are supposed to be for 12 and up. And, it, it doesn't. It doesn't spark my imagination. You know, I think a lot of these books are really well written, really imaginative, but it's just not where my head wants to go. One more. It's not just because, I mean, because education isn't just about cramming facts into your head. Education is about, as, as much about a social education, it's about learning to relate to people. And it's much easier to do that if the people around you are developing at the same point as you are. Um, you know, I, I, went, I, mean, I went to Oxford when I had just turned 17, and, and I think, I, I look, I, I, it didn't feel hard at the time, but I look back on it and I think that there were many ways in which that was not the ideal way to have done it. And I also think that I was looked after much more than I realised at the time. College authorities took very, very good care of me in a way that I didn't understand at the time because they were clever about it. Thank you very much for coming. Ladies and gentlemen,